Jude verse 3 begins with the words, Dear friends, we've already looked at that previously in one of the other messages in this series. But just to emphasise that it is found three times in the book of Jude, that's once every eight verses. And what it does is it indicates that there's a personal relationship between Jude and the people that received the letter. He uses the word right, and this is very interesting, he uses the word right twice in this verse. He says, I was eager to write to you, and then he goes on to say, I felt I had to write. And when we look at those particular words, we find that in the original, they're actually different words. And the first write means to write in a leisurely style. So you have a letter to do and you think, I'll need to do it sometime today, I'll probably do it later, but there's no urgency about it. But the second write that we find in that verse is totally different. It literally means driven to snatch up the pen. That would be a way of describing that second right in a way that we can understand today. Driven to snatch up the pen. And, and the change in Jude's uh, approach when he sat down to write this original letter was that he had become more and more aware of heresy and false teachers within the church. And so the letter that he, he had originally intended to write in a leisurely way, perhaps over, over a period of time or uh, not with a sense of urgency, suddenly it becomes a letter that he is compelled to write because of what he is aware of going on in the church. And that's still relevant today. Heresy, apostasy, false teaching, people within churches that are there with a wrong attitude and a wrong motive that ultimately are trying to undermine the church. And it's not just church, of course, any organization, any uh, society or group of people, there will often be those within the ranks whose motive is not pure and whose intention is not for the common good. And sadly, churches are no exception to that either. And so he, he said that, or he writes that, I, I, I was urged, I, I felt I had to write and urge you. There's, there's a sense of, of urgency in that word, isn't there? And the word urge, it, it, it means literally to pull to the side, to emphasise importance. If you understand football, you know football, you will often see that during the game, this is soccer to the uh, to the Europeans or to the Americans should I say, but you often see in the game of soccer or the game of football, the manager will pull players to the side or pull a player to the side that he wants to convey something very particular to, a sense of real importance. And this is what Jude is writing there. There was a sense of urgency I felt I had to write and urge you, pull you to one side and give you that special uh, challenge, that special word that I want to bring to you. And the word was that we need to contend for the faith. The word contend, it, it, it's used in a, in a wider sense to uh, describe participants in athletic contests. And so it gives a sense of a, a, a continuity um, a, a cost involved, an agonising almost, a dedication, a commitment, defending the faith. The theological term used is apologetics. Although it's not about apologising, it's not about apologising for the faith, it's actually about defending the faith in a way that is logical, reasonable and makes sense. It's not about aggression, it's not about arguing with people, it's not about a hard line determination. In fact, we find that summed up in 1 Peter 3 verse 15. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And so there's an urging from Jude in view of the false teaching and the heresy that is creeping into the church. There's an urging from Jude for the people, for the believers, to contend for the faith. And that is still true today. 
2000 years later it's the faith we can't contend for nothing we have to contend for something and what we contend for what we stand for is the faith the faith that we have in Jesus Christ the faith that leads people into a relationship with God the faith it tells us there once for all once for all the finality of revelation in Christ. And that's why we need to beware of those people that claim to have extra revelation. They may be predicting the end of the world, the second coming of Christ. They may claim to have some extra teaching that is not found in the Bible, that somehow God has revealed to them. This is the warning in scripture that we avoid the teaching that comes from those people because the faith for once for all has been entrusted to the saints. And that's the mind blowing thing about it really, that we, when we belong to Jesus, when we give our hearts and our lives to him, we are his hands, his feet and his voice. He uses us as imperfect as we are to bring his gospel into the world in which we live. Jesus didn't say wait, he didn't say stay, he said go, the great commission, go into all the world and take the gospel. In that way we can't expect people to just turn up at church. I know they do, it happens sometimes, but mostly people come to church because we invite them, we connect with them, we share our faith with them. And this is what Jude is writing about there. He starts off by addressing dear friends, the people that he was in a relationship with. He said, originally I wanted to write a leisurely letter, but I feel compelled to write with a sense of urgency because of those people that are trying to undermine the gospel, they're trying to undermine the true faith. He said, I want you to contend. I want you to stand for this faith. I want you to be bold about it. I want you to take this faith into the communities where you live. It's a faith that we stand for. It's a faith that we have in Jesus Christ. It's a faith in his word. It's a faith in God. And it's a faith that was given once for all. There is nothing else to be added to it. The final revelation is what we find in scripture. And that's what we take, the revelation that God gives us through his word.